So, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to start our lecture about biocompatibility tests and clinical trials. So, this semester lecture is following. So, first, I'm going to talk about biocompatibility classification, including cytocompatibility and animal study and clinical study. And then, second week, yeah, I want to show you how to culture the cell with the biomaterial. So some of them, you, are, you guys are already familiar with how to culture them, but for increasing your memory, yeah, I'm going to share this direct culture, indirect culture, using scaffold, membrane, fiber, particle, gel, 2D and 3D. And then you want to know when you make some your new material, how you evaluate initially in terms of uh, cytocompatibility. So, CCK live and their proliferation, EDOSA, FAX, and actin filament, and, and any other ICC. And then, once you want to know to mimic the external force in the human body, so we have EMF, cell stretching, compression, osmolarity, and electrical cues. I I'm going to introduce this kind of machine. And then, especially, I want to highlight the, how you mimic the infection microenvironment. So first, you have to study about the innate immune response, including damp and PEMP signaling. And then, maybe you are not familiar with the bacteria. So bacteria is totally different from the mammalian cell, like our human cells. So I'm going to show you gram minus and negative and positive culture, and how the people normally, normally evaluate the antibacterial effect using CFA plus blue inhibition zone study. And then later, I want to introduce our special, unique co-culture system, bacteria cell co-culture system. So normally, people use just only bacteria culture when they evaluate the antibacterial effect. But in iTrend, we already established this bacteria and cell co-culture system, so which is more biomimetic culture system than any other single culture. So first, uh, maybe you are not familiar with this ISO standard 10993. So if you want to pass your biomaterial in clinical market, the first step is to evaluate your biomaterial safety according to ISO 10993. Yeah, please remember this 10993. And then the title is like Biological Evaluation of Medical Devices. So they, they consist of part 12, something like. So part 1 is about evaluation and testing within a risk management process. Okay? And as you know, those kind of standards is also uh, written in French. Yeah. And then actually, what is the meaning of the ISO standard? Actually, ISO, some people said that abbreviation of international standard organization. But it's not that, actually. ISO is some um, only one. So ISO is derived from the Roman society. In ancient Roman, they want to uh, make some kind of golden standard for making their way. Because when they have different way, the carriage cannot be moved. Because they have to use some specific wheel and specific widths of the carriage. So they want to make the same way in all around the Europe countries. So that is why at the time they first mentioned of the ISO, they want to make ISO something, ISO width of the way or ISO chopsticks, something like that. So this comes from that Roman ancient country. So yeah, and so people in researcher in all of the countries they come together and then every year they have this ISO meeting. Yeah. So ISO meeting have a lot. So in terms of electrical device, also they have ISO meeting. Medical device like this, ISO meeting, and dental, ISO meeting, orthopedic, ISO meeting. But each ISO meeting have different task. So from the task one to task 30,000, 
they numbered according to their uh, task number. So ISO 10993 is that their task about the how to evaluate the medical device is assigned to ISO 10993. And then after a lot of discussion, maybe three or four years consecutively, and then they launch this standard. Okay, so there are many steps to launch the ISO standard. For example, initial draft, or some intermediate draft, and the final draft, revised draft, and then final ISO standard. Because when this ISO standard is established, all other countries adapt this ISO standard by their own uh, qualific one qualification for specific material or device. So this is very important. So yeah, I'm gonna tell you about the, what is the meaning of the ISO. So maybe if I ask you what ISO is a standard, uh, in, is an abbreviation of International Standard of Organization, it's not, it's not correct, okay? Actually, end of this uh, class, maybe you are going to have some exam, around 50 questions per each class. So 50, more than 50 questions in Tuesday class, and then another 50 question from the Thursday class. So you have to pass at least 85%. So if you fail, we are, we are going to give you one more chance. And the, but the threshold is up to 90%. If you fail, uh, so we recommend that for master degree, four pass, four exam pass, and then for doctor degree, six exam pass. Okay. So after you complete your class already in our Dangun University, but in ITRAN, maybe you guys already mentioned before, we have another special qualifying exam system. So you should remember the point. So anyhow, we are going to give you some kind of TF4 question or multiple question or some simple blank question. So based on that, you should try to understand what's the, what will be the question based on this content. And then the ISO standard about this biomedical device, they are grouping, they are classified group one, two, three. And then maybe I'm going to briefly mention the relationship among groups in preclinical test. So if we mention preclinical test, which means that all kind of study, including in vitro and in vivo, which is considered as preclinical test, and then I'm going to briefly show you clinical trial phase. So you should understand, if you, want, if you develop one material, first, as a preclinical test, in vitro study, in vivo study. And then if you pass, the government, like FDA, Korea FDA, they gave you a chance to do clinical test. And then you have the clinical trial phase one, two, three. And then after that, they are on the market. They're very uh, huge step. So, so you have to understand this step as much as possible. And then you want to uh, increase your deep understanding in terms of paper. Because why the good nature or science paper they mentioned about active people system? And then why, one, why the people want to, ha people <laughs> have, have highlighted the clinical trials? Then, clinical study, including in vitro and in vivo. So if you want to increase your impact of study, please include your clinical trial. And then maybe your study will have huge impact. Yeah. Okay, so this is some, yes. So when you see the ISO center, they always show like this. Scope, what is the, what is the scope of this ISO, ISO center, and then reference, terms, and general something. And then from five, they mention about how to deal, how to study, how to evaluate your material. And specifically, they mention in detail, like our protocol, the size, time, and culture, period, or media, any other things are specifically included in this ISO standard. So this ISO standard 10993 have Maybe if you copy, if you 
copy that more than 3,000 pages, very specifically mentioned. So this is the first page of ICE Center, and then they have many editions, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. If they want to revise the, this standard, this addition is increased. Okay? So nowadays, our standard 109931 is from the fourth edition. And then launch 2009, October 15th. Okay. And then when you look at this annex, annex, so also annex have very important information I included. So especially Annex A, biological evaluation test, I will show you later, is very important to you. So this is a whole ISO standard 10993. This is a golden standard document for biomedical device investment, investigation. So this 993 is essential test methodology for evaluating biocompatibility of medical devices. So let's look at one by one. Part one. Evaluation and testing within risk management process. This is some kind of general view. Part two, animal welfare requirement. You have to deal with animal. So how you deal with it? You can kill just by your intention or you should, uh, it's okay not to feed three days consequently. So those kind of minimal requirement for animal welfare is mentioned. And test for the toxicity carcinogenicity and reproductive toxicity. So your material is inside your body and then your, when you have a baby, what will happen? Your toxic can be delivered to the baby through some barrier between you and your baby, blood vessel. So this kind of general toxicity, carcinogenicity and reproducible toxicity is mentioned, are mentioned here. A selection of tests for interaction with the blood. How you evaluate the blood interaction using your material. So if you want to incorporate in your body and then your material can meet the blood, maybe this part four can be included in your assay. Please look at this. And then part five. This is in vitro study, basic concept. Maybe last semester I mentioned you in some detail, okay? Test for in vitro cytotoxicity. Part six, test for local effects after the implantation, like subcutaneous study or skin study, other things. And ethylene oxide sterilization residue. After you get sterilization, maybe you can, sometimes you feel like, oh, my material has some toxicity. So what, why they have toxicity like this? So this, uh, ethylene oxide residue can be evaluated according to this. Okay? And part 9, framework for identification and qualification of potential degradation product. How you qualify and quantify the degradation? Okay? And the test for irradiation and skin sensitization. So, this is some called delayed skin sensitization, like if you buy some chip, necklace, or earring. Sometimes you can feel itchy. This is some skin irritation, skin sensitization. How you evaluate that? Like, uh, right. And then part 11, test for systemic toxicity. Your organ is okay, like this. And then how you prepare the sample and include reference material. Reference material is that if you want to evaluate antibacterial effect, your reference material is your antibiotics. If we want to do some osteogenic uh, study, osteogenic material or some particle is reference material, like including negative or positive reference. I will yeah, show you in detail. And then identification and qualification of degradation product from whole body medical device. So this is some part nine is framework, some outline, and then they specifically mention about polymer ceramic and metal and alloys. Alloy is a uh, metal composition. So just when you mention metal, like gold metal, or what is that, aluminum metal, but alloy is metal, uh, gold, silver composition, complex, or gold, copper, complex. This is alloy. 
And then 66, talk site kinetic study design for degradation product and reachable group. Yeah, it's more specifically toxic co kinetic study. And then establishment of a liable limit for reachable sub substance. Chemical characterization of the material. And then now physical, chemical, morphological, topological characteristic of material and the principle and method for immunotoxicity testing of material device. So actually, if you understand this whole part 20, you can graduate. I'm pretty sure. Which means that it's very huge amount of information. And then all, all, of, all part of researcher, they put their all energy to establish this ISO standard. The page is around two, 20 or 30,000 pages. And then they, so, so the, so anyhow, this is very huge amount. So maybe some of them you are already familiar, even though without your uh, recognition, you already did some study based on this. Because a kind of like you, all of the sci scientists, they do by yourself, and then they come together. What is the best way to perform the, this bio biological testing assay? They divide, they argue each other, and then they make one document. Of course, this is not all. Based on your specific purpose, you can a little bit change it, device. So this is already all, always welcomed. This is only basic things. So you, if you have new kind of new generation material, also you can make, you can suggest another a testing assay. So you can add your own methodology in this ISO standard. If you participate this ISO standard meeting, And then this some um, basic flow work of biological tests or medical devices. Let's say your material is either direct or indirect contact. Maybe your material is not direct or indirect contact your body. No, which means you don't need to apply as a standard. This is not biomaterial. Okay? Yes, this means your material is biomaterial. And then Obtain device material identification, chemical characterization shall be considered according to this. And then, yes, which means that always if you have some new material, what is the first step? Characterization. In top, mechanical, physical, chemical, or say, without any cell. Okay, you have to know what is the composition, what is the roughness, what is the color how they are degraded. This is the first step. So that is why in most of the biometric paper, they mention about this uh, physical chemical or before the biological study, physical chemical and mechanical property will be mentioned first, normally. But if you want to highlight your in vivo or in vitro study, also you can switch. First, in vitro and in vitro, in vivo and in vitro study first, result, and then other chemical physical characterization will be introduced later. But normally, people do it like this. Okay? So this is the, how you arrange your figure. Okay? And then second, is the material same as a commercially available device? Which means you have your counter material, golden standard? Yes. Which means that already previous person they did similar flow work to evaluate their specific material. And then you can just copy them to evaluate them. Then does the material have the same chemical composition? Yes. Sterilization manufacturing system is the same? Yes. Body contact is the same? Yes. And then perform biological evaluation. I will show you Annex A later. So which means that if you have target material, but you want to make it in your, in, your, in your hand, but almost similar, like copy drug or copy biomaterial, and then you directly go through this Annex A. But unless, but it's not, maybe 50% people want to make copy material, but 50% they want to any a little bit change it. So when, they, when you have to say no in each, in either each condition, 
you have to do another uh, clinically relevant data, chemical, biological, for risk assessment. So let's say if you little bit change your chemical like solvent through the chloroform to ethanol, there are different but different solvent, right? In that case, you think about, oh, what's the difference of the chloroform or ethanol? When they are, when they are a residue in the material, what will happen? Ethanol is more toxic, or chloroform more toxic, or they are more evaporated, or easily evaporated, and then it's more better, okay. But they are not evaporated, and then they have a high risk of the cytotoxicity, and then you have to consider that point. And then you have to do some study how they evaporate and what is the remaining amount of your sorbent in the biomaterial. So you can think based on the some little slight change, you also can think. And then do sufficient toxicity, toxicology data exist for all chemical in the material? Yeah. If you slightly change one from silver to some natural nutrient. So this natural nutrient have some safety in terms of toxicity. You have all data, okay? And then you can compare. This AG, silver, already people use in biomaterial. And then you can comparably study silver and your antibac antibacterial material. Even though they, when they have similar toxicity, it's okay. But your material have more toxicity, you have to do another study. Okay, so in, in terms of in vitro study, uh, existence of toxicity is not a major concern. Always your material in your body have toxicity, but the merit is more, more merit is better than toxicity and side effects. So that's why you can comparably show them our my material have toxicity, but similar as already commercially available one, and then it's okay. Do the data apply to chemical mixture? Yeah. So let's say you can combine one and two chemicals together, and then you, you compare, you investigate individually A chemical, B chemical. But who will ask you what happened when you combine them together? So this kind of complex also mixture also evaluated. Okay. And then are the data relevant for dose and route of exposure? Let's say your material is for IV injection, but you didn't never evaluate the blood interaction with your material. It's not good. Okay? You only, when you did only subcutaneous study, even though your material is for IV injection, it's not, it's not consistent. Okay? It's not, it, it doesn't apply the real clinical study, your clinical settings. So always, if you establish your experiment design, you always think about how you deliver your material. IV, oral route, or direct implantation, or as a local, local, local or systemic distribution, or in the more highly inflamed tissue or normal tissue, in any other condition, you always think. And then try to mimic their condition, and then do the same, in vitro and in vivo. That's more relevant. And then, after you, when you pass it, also you can directly perform an essay. But uh, always, the, your data cannot incorporate this whole kind of things. If you slightly change it, and then you think, and then, oh, they, I can think about some changes, and then you can do the assay, perform further evaluation of device based on chemical nature material and type and duration of contact. And then select some of the biological tests and then certification. So this is the whole process. So this is NSA. NSA is a framework for development of assessment program. And it's not a checklist, which means that this acts I will show you later, is op sorry, optional, not absolutely mandatory, depending on the, each country's FDA policy. Okay? Let's see. 
So this you have to should you should understand this table very deeply. So what is the meaning of ABC? The contact time point, contact time, less than 24 hour, up to one month, over one month, permanent. ABC, okay. And then how your material can contact skin, mucosal membrane, or bleached or compromised surface, which means so. You can understand skin, outer skin, mucous membrane, subcutaneous, and breast or compromised surf surface. Like, mm, you have skin, but a little bit punctuated. You can make some little hole in your skin. This is breached or compromised surface. So little contact with the blood vessel. Okay, this is breached or compromised surface. So this is called surface device. And then when you hurt your finger, like paper or paper cut, this is also breached or compromised surface. Compromised means that some injured, little bit injured, but not that much severely. Okay. And then uh, category external communication device, which means that uh, they communicate with what? With blood or in your tissue. More continuously or more dynamically. So blood, indirect, tissue bone dentin, and circulating blood. So this circulating blood is when you make some stent, this circulating blood, so blood pass indirect is, is that maybe uh, some, some little micro vessels are involved, but not, not the major vessel. This blood pass or indirect. And then when you implant your material in the calvaria defect or knee joint or dentin, which is also external communication. Because in case of dentin, dentin are tube, tubule they have, so they can communicate easily with the blood in the prop tissue. And then tissue and bone also you can simply imagine, right? And then implant device. Implant device means that uh, you can, when you implant your material for bone regeneration or knee regeneration or chondrocyte regeneration, this is the implant device. Actually, external communication device, and then actually there is a little some hemian, what about it? Imbagus, imbagus, uh, some classification between external communication device and implant device. But the important thing is that implant device is more permanently implant and severely you can damage and then you can implant your material in the body. But external communication device, sometimes you can collect. You can collect it again. So let's say if you make some kind of uh, some needle for injecting some saline to the human body, there is a needle which, which can contact your blood vessel. This is called external communicating device because your needle is not tot permanently implanted, right? So you, based on this, you can understand. So easily you can understand surface devices like daily band, some dressing membrane. External communicating devices like needle to puncture your blood vessel. And the implant device is most of, most of the time the one you make it for tissue generation. is most of the time implant devices. Except skin dressing. Okay. So already you can actually you understand this category. Actually I will give you this 1000 this standard and then you if you have more question about this how they categorize it you can deeply see and you can understand easily and then you can know the how they contact each other to the skin and then the contact time and then this is suggested one so let's say you have skin undressing material and then i feel like every day i will change it intentionally and then this is surface divide skin and a and then they mention cytotoxicity and sensitization 
and irritation or intracutaneous reactivity. This is sub-Q study. Sub-Q study is recommended, not mandatory. And then you, you can do three of them, or you can do just one. And then as a document, you can say, our dressing material is very similar in terms of composition or the toxicity test. So I will, will not, I will not do these two other things study. But, but, and then maybe FDA officer, they can pass your material if you have very high rationality. But when they require, when they raise some question in terms of this sensitization or irritation, and then you have to do this assay again. Always the market people, they want to decrease this assay because assay means money. But the FDA person, they always, in, in, always increase this assay to back up their own ass. Because, because when some, in the later, after past the material, something happened, who will be blamed? Not the market person. Always FDA officers, they are blamed. So that is why they always require some other things. And then let's say you want to make some bone regeneration material, like Germa, CMP, and, and then Amal, how, how your material is categorized. Your Germa, CMP, uh, for bone regeneration, where, how you categorize your material? Surface? Yeah, surface, external, implant, what is, how you are categorized? Hmm? Yeah, among three categories. Among three categories, which one? Third one. Third one, this one, right? Mm -hmm. And then, tissue bone blood, which one? First one, tissue bone. Okay, and then ABC. Uh, what is the meaning of the A? Hmm? I think B. B? B is only one month. You want to collect again your material after one month? No, no, no. You leave your So I mean, yeah, so, so if you 100% one with one month they are degraded, mm. B is okay. But over one month? Mm. Yeah, and then permanent. Question is permanent. So type C. And then you have to do, recommend all these things. They are first recommended. And then based on your commercially available material as a counterpart, you can do some of them. And then you can, some of them are omitted. Okay? So, Andrew, so what is your material in your mind? Let's say microsphere for condosite generation, right? Yeah, same. Still implant Right, same C, right? Mm. So this is recommended. Okay. So sorry. So implant device blood is you can think about stent, stent, and then what is that? If if you implant some kind of auto generated electricity to maintain your heart system, this is also implant device blood, blood. or tissue sometimes. Okay, anyhow, based on your material, maybe most of the material is categorized in the C part. So, which means that implantation study, general toxicity, subclonic clonic toxicity, and system toxic, acute system toxicity, and subcutaneous study. All this, this kind of study is recommended. And then among this, group one is only cytotoxicity test, which is, what is that? In vitro study. And then other things are most of them in vivo, using animal except general toxicity. General toxicity, we are, you can think about how you evaluate general toxicity. If you want to use some human, 
30 years for one generation. If you want to use some, some flying, flying insect, maybe two weeks for each generation. If you use some worm, some sea albicans, maybe two days for each generation. If you want to use some bacteria or virus, just two or three hours for each generation. So what is the most efficient way to evaluate the gem toxicity? Based on, in terms of some time, bacteria or virus. But people are asking, is it really relevant to the human situation? Nobody knows. So but at least something will happen in the insect or some bacteria virus, we can think about, oh, maybe some chance to the human. But also, there is no nothing happen from the bacteria virus. Also, people ask, maybe the DNA system is totally different, so something can change. We, we can also consider this point. So there is no 100% answer about this issue. So that is why you can see some article when some material or some cell therapy, some drug are on the market already, but after a few, they, they, few years later, they are abandoned because of some huge side effect. So you can see some, watch some video, maybe 70 years ago, maybe some on the market, there is some special drug for decreasing how can I say? Imshinesis, like, what are you talking about? Imshinesis? 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 You know, when you are pregnant, you can, you try to kill some vomit, right? Uh, morning sickness. Morning sickness. Oh. And in that case, some, uh, seven years ago, in the European country, some, some pharmaceutical company, they sell some one drug, which can decrease some bony sickness. But in the end, they found out this bony sickness drug can have huge side effect to the baby. So they make some a lot of yeah, malfunction, malformed baby. So this kind of thing always happens. So you should be very careful about this. Yeah, right. What is that? Side. Talinomide. Talinomide. Yeah. Okay. Okay, question. In that table, there's a lot of blank. Hmm, blank. That means it's necessary or we can ignore it? We can, you can absolutely ignore it. Mm -hmm. But X is optional, but not mandatory. I highly recommend to do all things, but depending on your situation, you can a little bit change it. And then, so we have three groups. Group one is in vitro study. In ISO standard, they mentioned about some cytotoxicity, basically. Because they, this article, they always mention the biocompatibility, not the functionality. But in our case, we already, we already checked the bio efficacy, so you can think about this point, in vitro test, and the group two is animal safety test, which is animal, except general toxicity. General toxicity, we are using some, some bacteria or virus. Group three is animal efficacy test. So when you do carbaria bone defect, skin wound healing, or some knee joint replacement, this is called animal efficacy test and categorize it group three, okay? And then you always have to remember this term, terminology. Some people are misunderstood or misused a lot. So what is the dental material or material? Material or substance or a combination of the material and substance is specially formulated and prepared for use in the practice of dentistry, which is means dental material. And medical is medical material, biomaterial, okay? So material, substance, combination of them, all kinds of included, okay? Now, what is the final product? Final pro product is the product to be marketed, okay? So what is the intermediate product? So when before your gastrolization, which means intermediate product. 
But after sterilization and after packing, this is final product. Always you should evaluate the product using final product, not the intermediate product. Because intermediate product always something change during final packaging or sterilization. Okay? And then why is positive control? This is very important. Positive control means that demonstrate the suitability of the test system to yield the positive or reactive response. So positive control, positive or reactive response. The negative control means that negative or non-reactive or minimal response. So let's say you, you want to do some cytotoxicity test. Okay? And you have, you have some media blank, which is positive control or negative control. Yogun. If you have blank media without any cell, and then check the cytotoxicity test using CCK. Yeah, the cell media blank is negative. And then what will be the positive control? What, what substance can be used? Like DMSO, ethanol, this kind of thing can be positive control for cytotoxicity test. Because the test of cytotoxicity test is uh, checking the cytotoxicity. Okay, which means that the reactive response is the material should show toxicity. Okay, but in other way, if we want to check some cell viability test, let's imagine cell viability test, and then what is the passive control? When you think about cell viability test, the cell viability 100% is the passive control. But it's, it's kind of some some game using different word, but people, so as a rationally, you can think about the point. So the test name include the meaning of the passive control. So if we want to do some ROE study, uh, ROE study, so ROE, most of the time ROE is increased, right? So in ROE study, the passive control is the H2O2, because which can increase the ROE. Okay? But, and then, when you want to do apoptotic test, apoptosis can be in increased from certain chemical, right? This is called passive control. But if we want to do anti-apoptotic study, even though you are using same kit or same assay, but anti-apoptotic means that the some control material, passive control material should have anti-apoptotic effect. So based on how you term, how you uh, terminalize your test assay, you can use different term, passive control, negative control. Okay. So basically, this is a basic terminology, but people are always misused or misconfused. Okay. So people all, but if you want, if you do not catch 100% how you uh, correlate the meaning of the this positive negative control and the uh, effect, and you just use reference material. This reference material have apoptotic reference material or anti apoptotic reference material. So normally, uh, if we want to use the membrane type, so membrane type, the negative control reference material is uh, OH film, PTFE film. It's already mentioned in the standard. Okay. So maybe you are, you guys are a little confused about the passive negative control, but always think about the terminology of the assay even though you are using the same kit. And then, yeah, group one testing, they are categorized like this five, or you can add more. So, agar diffusion, filter diffusion, diet protein extract test, dentin barrier toxicity test, two sliced model. So group one is cytotoxicity test. And then you can think about Material, cell, how they are interact each other. 
they can directly meet each other, okay? Which refer to direct contact or extract test. So you can also think about this material is the extract from the material, okay? So you can think about two points, the material itself or extraction from the material. This is called number three, direct contact or extract test. And then when there's some in the between, there's some another material to mimic the body. Aga, some kind of polymer, filter, paper filter, like when you do some coffee drip, and then dentin barrier also, they have some little hole in the between, and the two slides, same as dentin. So when you think about the, how the material can meet the, your body, sometimes in the between there are some gap. Like if you put your dressing in your skin, your skin has a barrier, skin characteristic membrane. And if you put some of your material in the oral mucosa, already oral mucosa has a barrier to affect the inside of oral mucosa. So that's why many people to mimic to this um, barrier between material and the tissue. And then in group A, in in vitro system also you can mimic this situation. Okay. And after that, after you think about how they enter each other and you can evaluate how the cells are dead. Okay. This number, this five group is how they enter each other. Okay. But I will show you later how they are evaluated. It's very important. How they enter each other, how they evaluate it. Both of them are group A, group one, testing method. So from group five, this four things is in their method. Aga, you can also think about some kind of gel. Filter is a paper filter. And dentin, some, some tooth, tooth slide. And then, but most of the time, we do this number three. Okay. Direct contact or extract test in, in accordance to with eye standard. This is a more direct method even though you are using, the best thing is that direct contact, or when you implant your material, some surrounding tissue in your material, they can direct contact. But sometimes they are degraded, a degradation ingredient that can filtrate to other tissue, and then also they are affected. That is why people want to do extract test. Okay. So, and then you, you set up how they are interact with each other. And then after 24 hours or four hours or three days later, you evaluate them how the how much of the cell are alive based on cell number of say, proliferation test and coniform unit. And then that neutral red or tripan blue will say. To know whether your cell are alive or not. If you just count number without any tripan blue will say, you cannot know this cell is alive or dead. So that is why they need to kind of die. And then nowadays, how, how did you do? Mitochondrial activity test, CCK, MTT, or this DNA assay. You extract the DNA and then, and then count the number of this, this DNA. This is more accurate. Okay? So it is kind of just only the number you can do. And then you can get your, when you have a stem cell, you can put the stem cell single colony, a single, single manner. And then after a few days later, they can form some colony. Based on that, you can count the number of the cell, which have stemness. Okay. So using the proliferation manner. And then if you use neutral red and tripan blue, tripan blue is very familiar. Tripan blue, when the blue is dyed, why is that? They are dead. But neutral red, live cell, they are incorporated neutral red. When they are dying, the neutral red are diffused. It's contrary. So normally we use this triple blue for checking whether your cell is live or not. Okay. So maybe we have auto counting machine, right? They count the machine. This live, this uh, maybe blue outer surface only live. When the blue is incorporated inside, that they count automatically. Also, you can count by your eye, also you can only count the live cell. And then, 
This normal way, CCK or Live and Dead or MTS, there are many names, but anyhow, they are based on mitochondria activity test. So, and then maybe Live and Dead you can also stain it. So, I always tell you that why you should not believe CCK, CCK and entity. They only check the cell viability based on mitochondria. For example, if your material can decrease my mitochondrial activity without any cell death, in that case, the MTT assay can show decrease of cell viability. But this is really decrease of cell viability? No. Decrease of mitochondrial activity. Hmm. So only live and dead is very accurate. You can say live and dead. And then, indirect way, you can do CCK or MTS to say, so in terms of mitochondrial activity, you, uh, some cell viability is decreased or increased. Mm. But some people say that maybe cell viability, in case of cell viability, maybe the meaning is already incorporate this mitochondrial activity, because if vi viability means that not only live and dead, but also, in, but also some activity, and that maybe you can in incorporate this mitochondria activity in and to the test and then mention cell viability test. But more accurate thing is the live and dead. Okay, so cell, let's say cell and bacteria and mature extract, they combine them together. And then this agar filter dentin, they are in the between, and then they can enter each other, sh show some toxicity or any other bad, bad response. So this is an example of the bacterial material. So bacteria only can live in some in the bottom using some agar plate, and then we can spread. We can see the bacteria. Then you can put your antibiotic material here, and then. This is inhibition zone, which means the bacteria is dead. So which is example of the direct contact. This is indirect contact. Actually, if you put some material in the cell, your cell is crushed and damaged by the force of the material. So that's why in that case, you are culturing, you are see the cell on the cell on the bottom, and over that you put some agar, or you put some filter on the top. And then you can put your material again over. And then you can add a little PBS or DW, and then the reachable product can be released, can pass through the filter or agar or dentin, and then affect the below cell. So this is the example of that using neutral red. Neutral red, when there is a cell at that, the neutral red is released and come to be white, right? So the white area is not obvious, but white area is a toxicity area from the material. Okay. I I can do five minutes, not one hour later. We start already. We start seven five. I can have more ten minutes. We have group two at three. <laughs> yeah, try to focus. So group two is very simple. Acute systemic orally or inhal inhalation. Inhalation means gas, right? And the subacute or subchronic system toxicity. And then skin irritation, like sensitivity, intracutaneous reactivity, and delay type hypersensitivity general toxicity, and local effect after implantation. I will tell you very briefly about this. Using one picture for one method. So this is acute and subacute system toxicity. So how you do the system toxicity test? If you have nanoparticle, IV injection, okay. Oral uptake, okay. But if you have some implant, some hard material, a bit very big, they can digest, and then you extract. You can gather extract from the material using some oil or some DW or PBS 
and then after 24 extraction, you can feed your extract to the mouse or rat every day, one month, two months, or one week, and then check the organ toxicity, liver, pancreas, lung, some any any other organ you can check in terms of histology. So if you want to develop some systemic delivery nanoparticle and then definitely people are asking is there any toxicity event? So Juno, yeah, you have to consider this point. If you want to make some nanoparticle which can treat the liver, people are asking liver toxicity, pancreas tissue toxicity, any kind of toxicity in the organ, they're asking. Because your material should be IV injected. And then what is the delay hypersensitivity? Very simple. The micro vessels are very well developed in the backside of the mouse ear. So every day you put your extract in the backside every day for one week. And then one week later, you put your material again. And then check their blood vessel or lymphocyte number. So which means that every single day up to one week, you put your material in the blood vessel, and then maybe this mouse can feel have some sensitivity. And then after one week later, so one week every day, one week rest, and then put again. And then they can show very severe hypersensitivity from the delayed immune, delayed immune response. And then you can hit sacrifice and check some blood vessel and lymphocyte number. Hypersensitive test, which is normally done by the, some metal ion, some earring or necklace, or if you want to put some metal in your body, most of the, this hypersensitive test is highly recommended. Or if you have some toxic material like polymers, germa, or other things, also they can induce this kind of hypersensitivity. Why a skin irritation? Just for removing, put the dressing, and then check there some reddish histologically or optically skin irritation. And subcutaneous, like this. You open the skin, and then you put the material in subcutaneous. Subcutaneous is um, under the skin, but above the muscle. So in the between layer is subcutaneous layer. Like this. This is the material, and then you can know this how they are encapsulated. You can check their some uh, immunogenic response, inflammation response, and then inflammation or blood vessel number. This is the, the optical images. Maybe. Yeah, Ruby and Songil, maybe you guys are familiar with this, right? Subcutaneous test. And then, yeah, this is oral mucosal toxicity. You cannot use the mice or rat, but in case of this hamster, they have a lot of oral mucosa, so we can, this is my finger actually, yeah, push your oral mucosa of the hamster, then put your material, and then necklace which prevent the uh, swallowing of the material. And after one minute later, we can sacrifice and then evaluate this blood vessel, or histologically, whether this oral mucosa toxicity occur or not. The local effect at the implantation, what is that? Let's say you have a screw, or you have bone material, and then implant after drilling, and then check their in inflammation response is the group two, okay? But if we want to evaluate osteogenesis, is it group three, okay? Group two is only evaluate the biocompatibility, not the efficacy. So let's say uh, when you have the same, this kind of images, this is titanium, this bone, rabbit tibia bone, then if you evaluate this uh, HN staining, according to inflammation morphology, lymphocyte, plasma, macrophage, this kind of inflammation cell, is there or not? When you, when you check it, 
This is local effect after implantation. But using the same images, if you evaluate how the bone is formed based on bone area or bone implant contact line, which is group 3, to check the efficacy. Okay? So people normally check this inflammatory scoring, general tissue response using this histology. Okay? Maybe you can get other information. If you want to do this kind of things, study by yourself. There are many documents according to this. Not that much difficult. Actually, this AIMS study is very difficult to understand. But I will, this is a lot, maybe almost last things. So AIMS study is for carcinogenic test. So you have two tubes. One is control. One is experimental tube, which means that salmonella, you know, the food poisoning bacteria, right? So the hypothesis that when they have DNA mutation, which means the carcinogenesis, actually this is not 100% correct. When they DNA mutated, they will all, they will not always induce carcinogenesis. But this is their hypothesis. So salmonella, food poisoning bacteria, doubling time only two hours. So very easy to check the mutation. Normal salmonella, histone positive, can produce histidine for survival. But when they, we we intentionally mutate the salmonella, which is called his minus, cannot produce histine for survival. So we are using mutate salmonella, his minus, and then culture them lacking histine medium. So what will happen in normal situation? Salmonella cannot produce histine for survival, so they will be dead, no growth. Okay? But Somehow, your material in the experimental tube, they mutate this mutated salmonella to normal salmonella. And then this salmonella can produce histine for survival. And then the colony has formed. So it will be not easy to understand. Mutated salmonella is mutated again to normal salmonella from the your material. Some people say this is good, but it's not good because this is DNA mutation. Okay? So, if normal salmonella was cultured in no histine media, according to the answer, you can check. So, when, when you have experimental tube, experimental extract, and then culture them in histidine, no secretion salmonella, in histidine lacking media, when you show some colony which is positive or DNA mutation. Okay? Because some people ask, why don't you use this histine producing salmonella and then check their mutation? They will not generate the histine. It's almost impossible. Impossible to have this kind of situation in very short time. Because this because this unawkward way. Not direct way, not, how can I say, normal and go to the mutation is always not easy. So in the, in the short time, we cannot evaluate. That's why we already mutated and then to check whether they can go back to normal. Even though they, get, they, get, they can go back to normal, this is not good because they, your material can induce DNA mutation. So when they DNA mutation, we can say they have some chance to Induce carcinogenesis. Okay, this is the only thing you can check in ice standard. But also you can do directly. Put maybe you have a cancer cell. Put the put your cell in subcutaneous. When they form the cancer, it's cancer. But maybe there is not much of a chance your material can induce cancer. So that is why this is the only way you can do. In the group three, briefly mentioned, just efficacy test. Any more tests, but for checking the efficacy. Okay? So let's say you have some dentin regeneration material, you implant it and check their regenerate or not. This is group, group three. Cover defect, group three. Skin wound healing defect, group three. Okay? So all, all kind of effective test is group three.
Okay, this is final relation of the among the groups. Hmm. So Ruby, so you already perform a lot of in vivo study, right? So basically, the first step is you check toxicity test as a group one primary test, and the group two animal test, and then you just study group three. You have to do like this because you have to decrease the number of the groups. First, you have 10 groups, but you cannot do 10 group study in animal study, group 2 or group 3. So you have to check as a primary test, screening out what is the least, least cytotoxicity, but similar, similar effect effectiveness, and then choose one of them for in vitro, in vivo. This is normal way to decrease the number of groups because group 2, group 3, let's say, it, it will have a lot of difficulty and costs a lot, okay? So normally, the best scenario is group 1 pass, or decrease the amount of group, group 2 pass, decrease, and group 3 decrease, and clinical trial 1 or 2. From the 100, 1 or 2 you can gather. So what is the future target of the target material for clinical test? But sometimes, your material can fail group 1 test. Fail means that normally, the toxicity less than 70%. We have a lot of material which can show that toxicity below 70%, including STF, Germa, or other dental resin, or your nanoparticle. It will show less than 70% toxicity. But we can do animal test. Why? We cannot believe in vitro study cannot 100% mimic the in vivo system. So if you fail in group one, it's okay. You can direct to group two. But if you, and then if you pass it, it's okay, and then you can do other group three and clinical trial. But sometimes group one and two you fail, you can directly go through group three. It's okay. It's up to you. But somehow group three they have huge efficacy, even though. They have in vitro toxicity, in vivo toxicity, but because of their high merit of the your material, they can generate some tissue. And it's possible, right? And then you can group three pass, and then you can do trial after they proved you, proved you. Hmm. But if you all kind of group one to three fail, this is not much of a chance. Direct clinical trial, maybe every day cannot approve. But in case when you are in the world, you can apply. There's why all kind of very dramatic uh, change of the biomaterial can happen. War. World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War. Because they are dying. So we can inject anything. In 10 minutes, they're dead. There's no way to treat. So do anything. So there's why yeah, something happened. And then you can do clinical trial. So when you can say preclinical study is including group one and two, one to three, using in vitro and in vivo system, and a clinical trial actually we uh, rarely encountered at the moment in iTrend. Okay, so this clinical trial I obtained from the Wikipedia. So simply you can just think about memorize phase one, phase two, phase three. So preclinical. Pre is including in vitro and in vivo, group one to three. And then after you're getting approved from the FDA, you can do phase one, phase two, phase three. So phase one is those screening in normal condition people. So your target is treat the diabetic, but you are using normal person and then check the dose, which cannot show any toxicity in terms of systemic or locally. And then type 2 now, you can collect diabetic patient, normal patient, and then compare. And then you can find proper dose, which is least of the systemic damage or little increase of the diabetic condition. And then group 2 and 3 difference is the number of the patient. Number of patient is 100 for group 2, page 2, but group page 3 is over the 300 person. Okay. So the important thing is that group phase one, we never 
treat. We never dose the patient. We only use the normal person to find the opt optical optimal concentration, which is not which didn't show any toxicity. Why we have to do like this? So preclinical two percent money, but clinic page one, page two, page three, you can put more super higher money. So that is why after preclinical study, we have to screen out for succeeding the phase three. So that is why all our big market pharmaceutical company, they want to develop a highly efficiently or highly biomimetic preclinical platform using organ, reprogramming study, uh, bacteria, cell core culture system, organoid, any kind of material thing. Also, they focus on the preclinical study, how we mimic this phase three condition, or phase two condition, because of this high amount of the money. So the final success ratio for phase three from the preclinical is less than 10%, which means if you develop 10 material, one is past, past three. Okay. Okay, thank you.